Hey, welcome to Make Your Money Matter. I'm your host, Brad Barrett. I'm also a managing director and partner here at One Capital Management. Today on the show, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna talk about the $1 billion Powerball jackpot winner and what that means for their taxes and the discussion, the decision really, around whether they should take the annuity, the lifetime payment versus the lump sum and really how this actually relates to all of us when it comes to our money. But before we get started, make sure to smash that subscribe button hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. All right, let's get into it. So as mentioned, the July 19th, not that long ago, Powerball drawing was obviously one for the ages. And many people I think are curious about how much uh, money a Powerball winner will actually take home after taxes, especially, frankly, with the increasing payout and these record high jackpot amounts. I mean, last year, someone won $2 billion. And then this week, obviously, the little over a billion dollars just this week. So. I think it's important to remind everybody that the odds are interesting here, right? The odds of winning are about one in 292 million, all right? One in 292 million. But there have been frequent incidents of single winning tickets in the jackpot, really that's rolled for months. So all eyes we saw were on last week's drawing on July 19th, and the estimated payout, again, for the Powerball drawing was 1.08 billion to be exact. Now, according to Powerball, that was the third largest Powerball jackpot and the seventh largest US lottery jackpot. Now, I should share that I have never once recorded, written, or really even discussed ever in all my years of being an advisor, a jackpot, a lottery drawing, or, or anything of that sort for this reason because it's one of those things that the odds are just too crazy. It's not investing, it's not a strategy, it's gambling. It's okay, let's just call it what it is, all right? And frankly, the reality is I would much rather spend my time, personally, on things that we can pragmatically design and plan for, and I think ultimately that has a a higher risk-reward ratio. That said, obviously in the past couple of years, we've been seeing these record high numbers, and I think all of us, let's, let's, let's pause for a second, instead of this world of finances, let's have some fun, all right? We're human beings in this world. And this past week, I think many of us have gone into what I call the stork analogy, the stork theory. And here's what I mean by that. We've all been in the car before, sitting on the beach with your significant other, you know, walking the dog, right? You know, maybe you're watching TV on a lazy Sunday afternoon, you know, just thinking about what if, right? What if, you know, a a stork dropped a million dollars on my doorsteps, right? And you think, our minds immediately go into, I would do this and I would do that. And I think something like this that we saw in the news when someone winning a billion dollars, the first thing you probably think of when you're talking to a barbecue or some friends is, you know, oh man, what would you do? You know, what what would that mean for you? And then ultimately you start talking about the numbers, like, oh man, how many, how much taxes are they gonna pay, right? And, and you know, you know, what's that gonna look like? And all of a sudden, at some level, like I've seen in my career as an advisor, there's at some level of income or some sort of lottery winning that the taxes become irrelevant. Let me just be frank, right? You're like, I don't really care how much I pay in taxes. I'm still gonna get a half a billion dollars for doing nothing other than walking into that liquor store and buying a ticket. So I bring this up simply to say that as we see these things come out, understand that it's fine to daydream. In fact, it's fun, go for it. But the reality is the decisions you make on a daily basis to actually better your financial situation actually will matter more in building your wealth. Right, and, and I'm not saying not to go buy a ticket if that's your prerogative, have some fun, go for it. But the reality is, again, the odds are one in 292 million that you'll win. But I wanna share something as a financial advisor, and I'm gonna act today, have some fun with all of us today, as the financial advisor for this person. If this person who had won this you know, billion dollar jackpot winning last week, walked into my door and said, I'm the person who won, I'd first be like, you lucky SOB. But we would go through a couple scenarios, right? We would go through, Obviously, the two main ones here, the lump sum payout or the annuity. Now, if, if anyone wins anything, right, this is true. If you win a car you know, or, or maybe you win a, at casinos, you'll get different options of things, um, you know, and, and you can go through how that would work for your own situation. And I've actually had uh, this happen with my clients. I've had clients win, you know, cars on the golf course, some prefer a hole in one. I've actually had clients win some money on radio shows, nothing to this magnitude by any means, but it does happen. And you can choose certain ways to receive your payment. In this case, really mainly two, lump sum or a lifetime payout. And again, they can choose between these two and they can receive the payout on what's called an annuity. Now, when I say the word annuity, I'm not necessarily talking about the product that many of us know uh, on the investment retail market, right? Typically sold by some salesperson or insurance person claiming you know, they're a financial services professional. What I mean by an annuity is actually the, the definition 
of a periodic payment. That's all an annuity really means. Think about your, your pension, for example. Think Social Security. Anything periodic on a consistent basis. Now, the annuity portion of a jackpot winner will be paid in 30 graduated payments over 29 years. That's the key number one here we're going to talk about. Now, the other option is lump sum payment, right? And they can receive the money all at once. Now, most lottery winners, if you look at it, and I was looking into this, right? Most lottery winners choose a lump sum payout. And I have a theory as to why. Now, I shared this on a couple episodes ago around the conversation between the two words of earning versus receiving. And I was really relating it then to inheritance and how to plan for that. And look, it's okay to be candid about this, and I want to be here today. We value things differently when we've earned it versus when we just received it by, again, walking into a liquor store and buying a ticket for $10. I think that's why you see the majority of things around lottery winners choosing the lump sum because they don't have an emotional tie to it. They didn't build some company and then sell it for a billion dollars. They're not overly worried about taxes because they look at the net check and be like, I'm still getting a half a billion dollars, right? It's a bunch of money, which again, this is the net cash value uh, in this jackpot, right around half a billion. It's a huge lump sum. And I think any lucky lottery winner, right, will also be looking at a significant tax bill. And one of those tax bill will be to the federal government. Now, Depending on where a winner lives, uh, another you know another tax could be for that state. Fun fact: this jackpot was actually won in the state of California, my home state, and they actually, believe it or not, don't tax. They don't have a state tax on uh, lottery winnings. Now, other states uh, have tax rates uh, for lottery winnings that generally range from usually between three percent to almost eleven percent. Now, anyone who's ever won something, uh, you know, maybe not at this grander scale, uh, whether it's a car, as I mentioned, or something on a radio show, you definitely want to talk to your tax advisor. I, I for sure hope and pray this person at least had a conversation with a CPA about their options, uh, because there are certain ways, even certain amounts, you might win at casinos and things like that, that you want to make sure there's different ways they can be tax. But in any case, once applicable tax rates are taken out, the amount of money that any jackpot winner would walk away with will be much less, obviously, than the the, the splash news across the headlines, right? If someone wins a billion dollars, they're not going to go and get a check for a billion dollars. So you need to understand that. Now, taxes on the Powerball, you want to look at how much they're actually going to pay for things like 2023. And the top federal income tax bracket currently is 37%, uh, which applies to single filers who have more than 539,000 in income. And obviously for joint filers, that level is 650,000, give or take. Now, due to inflation, I think it's all important to note here, federal income tax brackets have been adjusted somewhat upwards, as I stated before. I wanna act for a second that I'm the advisor for this person. Again, I'm not their tax advisor, but their financial advisor for a second. And again, if he or she were to come into me and ask what the right monetary move is, the right fiscal move, the right mathematical move would be, again, just from a perspective of numerical and maybe empirical data, my perspective would be that the annuity payment would pay you more over time because you'll get paid out more, but you get paid out over 29 years instead of right away. You just look at the numbers here. Let's look at a lottery calculator. And I did some fun here, some fun math for us uh, for a second. Let's break this down. If you actually go to omnicalculator.com, I have no relation to them at all, but you can actually input almost any dollar amount into the field and it will give you an idea of the lump sum payout or the annuity payout and the difference between the two. So if you look at the screen here for a second, what I put in there was a billion dollars. I just rounded it out to a billion, right? I put filing status single. Again, I don't know whether this person's married or single. Uh, you can you know play around with this if you'd like to. And it also asked the state in which you live. I put California because that's where this lottery was won. Now you scroll down, you can actually see the lump sum payout versus the annuity. Here's my example, right? The lump sum payout if a billion dollars was there and you were a single filer in the state of California, your lump sum payout would be $520 million. Now, right to the right of that, you see the annuity payment, the payout being at a billion dollars, the difference being $480 million. Again, the annuity payment will be paid out over 29 years and the lump sum payout will be paid out right away, 520. And I wanna bring this back up for a second because what I think is more important to understand here is play back the historic analogy. Let's have some fun. Let's get back into our day daydreaming mode right now, wherever you're watching or listening, right? Let's just think about this for a second. If you were to win this by simply going with some friends, maybe jokingly buying a ticket, maybe you're strategizing and playing it some way you think there's some strategy around it. Either way, you won this. That's why they call it a winning. You didn't earn this. I hate to break it to you. It's okay to admit you didn't earn it. You didn't spend 30 years building something. You didn't slave day in and day out to you know manage your finances and live within your means and save and invest and take risks and things like that. No, this was just a lottery winning. I think 
by and large, the reason why people take the lump sum payouts is simply because it's an earning. They understand and see right here, clear as day, there's about a half a billion dollars difference between what you would get over the annuity life pay versus the lump sum. But that's still a half a billion dollars in their bank account that they can use right away. So the one caveat I'd bring in here, and I was actually talking to my producer about this and he had a good point, is age. If you win this, let's say this person who walked in my door at me acting as their advisor and they're 85 years old. The annuity payout wouldn't make that much sense because we don't know when God's going to call that person back up. It's different than if you're 25 and won it. So time, as always, you got to remember, time is money. Time matters more than money. I always say that. You hear me say that often. So time does actually matter in this scenario. This is where customization does come in. Fun fact, though, if you look at the research on it, if you do choose the annuity, and let's say you were the 85-year-old um, or, or whatever age you chose the annuity, frankly, you can add a beneficiary, one. You can put one person as your beneficiary. So if God forbid something happens to you, the, the annuity payment would still continue to that person. So again, just some fun with the calculator there to go through. And again, I, I would relate this uh, though to all of us as we look at this kind of having, you know, having some fun and thinking about this. Uh, and this episode really is more about fun, be kind of the what ifs of the world. You know, I, I deal so many often, so often in the pragmatic strategies and it's, it's fun to, you know, take a break for a second. Um, because look, it could happen. Luck comes. It's true. Luck comes from hard work in my opinion, but it does come. And the reality is if you look at it, right, the annuity will pay out over longer, but again, it has to do with the source. As I mentioned before, if you earn something like an earned 30 year pension or, or you built a business, right? You're more likely to spend more time understanding the most effective ways to take that money than you would say in a lottery winning. And it's not because that person may not have education around money. It's not that the numbers don't matter to that person. It's just because they gave it to them. They didn't, they received it, they didn't earn it. And it's okay to speak about. There's a behavioral trait there, there's a difference. So really what I wanna to share today is, again, more out of a fun topic today, but around this crazy third largest lottery winning. And the fact that it was actually one here in my home state of California, I thought it was interesting for all of us to take note that if you look at certain things, you can play out, you know, historic analogy, feelings, but remember, this tried and true discipline will win out of just keeping to your normal days. You know, you, you can make yourself wealthy by spending the time daily living within your means, putting money aside, continually investing and play the long game. I know it's not sexy like winning a ticket. I get it, but it works. As Warren Buffett always said, look, he, I can teach someone to be a millionaire, but no one wants to get rich slowly. So as we all digest everything that's happened and we can fantasize and have some fun, let's also remember to get back to reality, make sure we live within our means, keep investing continuously, have discipline and have discernment. But I would love to hear what you would do. Give us a comment. Leave us know what, what option would you choose? Would you choose the annuity or would you choose a lump sum payment? Hey, hope you enjoyed that show today. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the Make Your Money Matter show so you don't miss a single episode. And until next time, always remember to make your money matter.